Assalamu alaikum. Today's video will be looking at the brain and the brain stem. Now in front of me I have a specimen and a model and both are forming one half of the entire brain. The model is representing the right hemisphere while the specimen the left hemisphere. So let's look at both things side to side. We'll start with the external surface. Now, externally, we always take the central sulcus of Ronaldo as the reference point. In this case, the central sulcus is right at this point, right over here. This entire sulcus, right over here. It divides the anterior lobe and the parietal lobe. This gyrus is the precentral gyrus, and the one behind it is the post-central gyrus. So I will put a yellow to represent the gyruses. Let's use the thick ones because the gyruses are thicker. And to show you these same marks on the model, you can see once again, here we have the central sulcus of Ronaldo, the pre-central gyrus and the post-central gyrus. So let's put two yellows over here as well. Pre-central gyrus and the post-central gyrus. And in between we have the central sulcus of Ronaldo. This is the starting reference point. Let's look anterior to the pre-central gyrus. We can see three longitudinal gyruses, the superior frontal gyrus, the middle frontal gyrus, and the inferior frontal gyrus. And you can see they're divided by two sulcuses, the superior and inferior frontal sulcus. So this part of the brain, the anterior lobe, this is where a person's personality is developed and stored. And obviously damage here affects the personality. So let's put blue for the frontal gyruses. The one on top, this is the thick one. The one in the middle, right over here. And the one inferiorly. There we go last one right here and you may have noticed that the inferior one actually has multiple parts the one closer right above the lateral lobe this is the operculum part then it makes a sharp angle this is the angular part and the one remaining portion is the orbital part so here i'm putting the last pin on the inferior frontal gyrus similarly we're going to put them over here as you can see the frontal, that's much easier to pass it through here. Now, since a lot of this has been mangled, the inferior one is not nicely seen. So we're just gonna put one in the middle one right here and leave it at that. So we have the specimen and the model here. Now let's go behind the central sulcus. I've already put a mark on the post-central gyrus. The majority of this region is the parietal lobe. You can see here, all of this right over here is the parietal lobe and it's divided into two parts, superior and inferior parietal with the interparietal sulcus. It's not that nicely seen over here, but this is your parietal lobe. Going even further back, there is a line demarcating the parietal lobe from the osper lobe. And that is the parieto ospital sulcus, which is more appreciated on the medial side. But this part right here is the ospital and this is the parietal. So, here I'm putting one in the parietal lobe, here, and one yellow, let's put a thicker one for the hospital lobe on the back side. This is where we have our vision formed. And likewise on this model, you can see over here the hospital lobe. So you have the primary and secondary visual centers. And right here in the middle is the parietal. Since the lateral lobe is not visible on the specimen but it's seen here so I'm just going to focus on the lateral uh, the temporal lobe on this portion right here the temporal lobe as you can see extends below the anterior frontal and the parietal lobe this temporal lobe itself has several gyri superior middle and inferior temporal gyruses and they extend to the front side let's put a green on these gyruses right over here on the temporal gyruses Again, then you can't see them on the specimen, but you can see them here on the model. And one down below over here. Here we go. 
Likewise, they're divided by the superior and inferior temporal sulcuses. This sulcus between the frontal and the temporal lobe is the longest sulcus you can see here, and that is the lateral sulcus. Having that said, let's move on to the back side. Now, I'm going to turn both the model and specimen around, but I'm going to orient them in such a way so that you can see it in entirely. And I'm going to move these pins from the front side so we can reutilize them again on the medial side. Now, we can see a whole lot of other garrison sulci, but aside from that, we can also see the portion of the diencephalon. That's actually the parts of the thalamus and the hypothalamus here. So, once again, we'll start from the back side and then we'll go to the forward frontal lobe. On the back side, the ospital lobe, this portion right here is the lingula because it has a tongue like shape. And the lingula is divided from the cuneus by the calcarine sulcus. This is the calcarine sulcus and this is the cuneus. Remember, this is all part of the ospital lobe, the same region where you had the visual center. And let's put the same on this once again. Here you can see a very nice lingula. Here you can see the calcarine sulcus and here you can see the cuneus. From the cuneus, right over here, we come to the precuneus. This is part of the parietal lobe, the precuneus. The precuneus and the cuneus is divided by the parieto occipital sulcus. This is the same sulcus which is dividing the ospital lobe and the parietal lobe. So here we have the precuneus over here. Lingula, cuneus, precuneus, parieto occipital sulcus, calcarine sulcus. From here on, you can see a line which descends and immediately goes forwards in a curve-like fashion. The same can be seen over here as well. So look at this line which descends down and then goes forward like so. Uh, here, let me show you this one right here. From this point till this point right over here, this region is the paracentral lobule. The paracentral lobule, and let's use a red for this one. Paracentral lobule. Here. This portion right over here. Sorry, this one. I have not basically put the mark for the precuneus here. So let's put that one here so we're not confused. Here we go. Okay. Now, the paracentral lobule. From behind this, you can see a line which ascends downwards and goes forward. This is the marginal sulcus. As it goes forward, it forms the cingulate sulcus. Singular because this guy right over here is the cingulate gyrus. We're putting a red pin on the cingulate gyrus. The sulcus which goes above is cingulate sulcus. It comes back and ascends upwards to form the marginal sulcus. Seeing the same over here, I'm putting a red on the paracentral lobule and here you can see the marginal sulcus as it descends downwards and goes forwards and here we have the part of that. If I go even further down then we come to the corpus callosum. This margin you see here is the corpus callosum. Above is the sulcus for the corpus callosum. So here the singular uh, gyrus has really shrunken so we're just going to put a small pin right over here like this and obviously we need to put one in front as well. This, what you see here, just like in the frontal lobe, we had the frontal gyrus. Since this is on the medial aspect, this is the medial frontal gyrus. It forms the same part of the frontal lobe. And here I have once again the medial frontal gyrus. Here we go. So we can finally see, once again from back to forward, the lingula, the cuneus, the precuneus, the paracentral lobule, and remember the paracentral lobule is the one which has the sulcus of Ronaldo coming into it. If I were to turn this around, follow the sulcus of Ronaldo, the central sulcus of Ronaldo backwards, you come to the paracentral lobule. So from this paracentral lobule, in front you have the medial frontal gyrus and below is the cingulate gyrus. Once again over here, 
the lingula, the cuneus, the precuneus, the paracentral lobule containing the central sulcus of Rinaldo. In front we have the, yeah, a bit inaccurate. We have the medial frontal gyrus, and here we have the cingulate gyrus with the cingulate sulcus right up above. Having done that, let's move on to the diencephalon down below. And we'll try to use different pins over here, green colored ones. In the diencephalon region, below the corpus callosum, first and foremost, there's a bit of septum pellucidum here, which divides the two parts of the lateral ventricles. The central uh, septum pellucidum has been ruptured on this part here. This is where septum uh, pellucidum used to be. And look as I'm passing a pin through this. You can see how deep the cavity is. So actually, I'm going into the lateral ventricle, which was actually the, of the left hemisphere. This, what you see here, is the front part of the corpus callosum. And this bulge is the thalamus. Let's put a green pin on the thalamus right over here. You can see this protruding part, thalamus over here. The same thalamus can be seen right over here in the interthalamic adhesion this portion. It's more actually hidden behind all these structures, but since this is ruptured, you can nicely appreciate the thalamus. In front, the septum pellucidum has been ruptured. Behind, most of the structures also have been removed. It's mostly bits of the lateral ventricle you can see. On this side, we have a lot more structures, so let's utilize this to point them out. If this is the thalamus, around below is your hypothalamic region. I'm putting another green pin in the hypothalamic region. Here is the fornix, the anterior commissure, I hope you can see this, and the lamina terminalis. Anterior commissure in first bulb you see here is the anterior commissure and then below is the lamina terminalis. Likewise on the back side, first we have the habenular commissure, which is not nicely seen here. Then we have the pineal gland, then the posterior commissure, and finally we come to the brain stem. So, all of these things, it's very nice to see them on the model, but it would be even more fun if we had them on the specimen. Since the specimen is, is mangled, we can't see any of those things. However, I do have a specimen of the brain stem here. So let's now finally see the last part, the brain stem, and compare it with what we see over here. The brain stem, as you're seeing in the model, we're seeing its medial view sideways. So if I were to hold the specimen, this is what you're seeing, except this should be cut sagittally. Let's look at it from the front view then. On the front, you can see how it has several parts. It has the medulla, and then it has the pons, and up above the midbrain. So likewise, here we can see the medulla below. And this medulla is the one which meets with the spinal cord. And you can see how the brain stem is actually quite small and narrow. Here, it's magnified for learning purposes. But the brain stem is actually quite small, and this medulla is the one which meets with the spinal cord. Here, this part is your pons, and in front you can even see this groove over here. This groove is your basal groove for the basilar artery. Put a little pin on this point right over here. Here, here I'm putting the yellow pin on the pons, and at the center where we have the basilar groove for the pyramid uh, for the medulla. These two are your pyramids, the elevations you see here. And obviously, the part in the center is the anterior median fissure. So, I'm putting a pink pin on the pyramids of the medulla, just to identify. The midbrain, on the other hand, has been mangled once again, but we can see the crust cerebri. The crust cerebri are bits of that on right and left. Inside, right over here, this portion, this is where we have the interpeduncular fossa between the two crust cerebri. But since it is not, it's mangled, there's no point in actually putting that point here. But I'll put it anyway. Lastly, on the posterior surface of this brain stem, we can see how this pons and medulla are forming the anterior wall of the fourth ventricle. Behind this, you have the cerebellum. Just like over here, you can see how the cerebellum is right behind the pons and medulla. In fact, if I were to take this portion out, there we go. You can see how on the back side we have the 
cerebellum. And in between the cerebellum and the backside is the fourth ventricle. So this fourth ventricle anteriorly is covered with the pons and the medulla. You can see a bits of the cerebellar peduncles as well. These are what hold the cerebellum actually. This right over here, the cerebellar peduncle. It's a mixture of all the superior, middle and inferior peduncles. And the majority of other structures are pretty uh, minute, so you won't be able to appreciate them on this video. Things like the internal arcuate, uh, external arcuate lines and the vagal hypocausal triangles. They're quite minute, you will need a better basically magnification to see them. But grossly speaking, in spotting, these are the important points that they can ask because they're very visible and nicely seen here. So this was the spotting on the brain and brain stem. And hopefully it was uh, helpful. And inshallah join us next time as well on our next video. Allah Hafiz.